Hello everyone and welcome to F1 23, our first video on the new game for a new career mode. We finished off F1 22 not long ago and we are now here for a new career. We will be doing another driver career on this year's game. I enjoyed it very much last time and so I decided to do that once again, especially since my team hasn't changed whatsoever since F1 22 and F1 2021. It's all still very much the same thing. So we are going to be doing another driver career mode here. Obviously with a different uh, base storyline. Last time out we were a Mercedes junior driver that started at Williams and then we ended up going to Mercedes. This time out uh, it will be different for the calendar though. We're still sticking to 10 races in a season at least at the beginning of this career mode. Might change later, don't know yet. Uh, but we are starting out in Australia, bringing Australia back to being the first round of the season. Uh, then we are moving to Imola, then Silverstone, Belgium and Netherlands rounds out the first half of the season. Then we are moving to Japan, then the new track in the game at Qatar, then Brazil, then another new track in Las Vegas. And then Abu Dhabi will round out the season. And I think that is actually a pretty very uh, interesting lineup. We've got two new tracks that have never been driven before in the F1 games, as well as a bunch of classics. And obviously my home race to start off the season. Uh, just like it used to, uh, just a few years ago really, before the whole COVID-19 pandemic sort of shuffled things around a bit and it's just sort of stuck to being uh, still near the start but not quite the first round of the season. So we brought that back for season one here in this career mode and that is all really the important things uh, set out for the career except obviously for the team we will be driving for. Obviously we're going to speed through here the character creation, it's all the same thing still setting up our character to be pretty much the exact same as it was last time out. The only difference is the helmet. Uh, last couple games I've had just a plain green helmet. This time out we're going to have a little bit of a design on our helmet. It's still going to be all green and then just a bit of a black design uh, but just a little bit something new for this uh, for this year's game. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to maybe play around with a couple helmet designs as I haven't really done that before in the F1 games. But now the most important part of this video, the team selection. Who are we going to be racing for? I imagine you would have seen it in the thumbnail, uh, but we are going to be racing with Alfa Romeo. Our teammate will be Zhou Guan Yu. The story will pretty much be that Bottas retired at the end of the 22 season. And so we are the new driver that has been signed to Alfa Romeo to fill in for the Finnish man. Uh, however, it, as opposed to last time out where we were a Mercedes Junior uh, that signed for Williams, we are not in a academy at all in this career at the moment. We are just a completely free driver that is free to go wherever we want. We have just been signed into Alfa Romeo Sauber for our first season of Formula One. And so yeah, that, that's a bit of a, an exciting prospect. We could go absolutely anywhere. We don't have a set path just yet. We could stay with Alpha for many seasons. We could leave at the end of season one. Who knows? We'll see where the wind sort of takes us in this career mode as we have a look at the driver perks heading into season one here. We have some funds to buy one perk and uh, just like we did last time out as well, we are going to go for the resource points boost, especially being in a lower team. It is very important to get as many resource points as we can to bring upgrades and try and improve the car as much as possible. Now we're going to look at exactly where we need to be putting these upgrades into. You can see in terms of aerodynamics, we are actually the worst on the grid. For chassis, we are the third lowest. And then the engine, uh, very surprisingly, is uh, we are second. I guess I say surprisingly, we have a Ferrari engine, which is the highest rated in the game. Obviously, Ferrari will be the fastest. And then uh, Alpha and Haas are the next two. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, that is a very good starting position in terms of the engine performance. And as you can see there, I decided to put all of my resource points into aero to try and get uh, that as high as possible. And we get both upgrades in there, uh, very luckily for us. And with some more resource points after moving through the calendar, I actually decided to go into the chassis department there, get some weight reduction. Um, I just, you know, it's very important to make sure you don't sort of go too hard focused in on one and then leave all the other ones falling behind. So we've got two aero upgrades in so far. We've got a bit of a uh, de department event here for the durability. And we can either get a discount on a uh, reliability upgrade or an extra 500 resource points in our pocket. I decide to go for the resource points as uh, the, the durability isn't really the, the most important thing to focus on at the moment. And I decide to put these points into a rear downforce upgrade. So to bring in 
uh, yet another one that could potentially come in before Australia. There is a bit of a wait before the Australian Grand Prix uh, when you have that set as the first round of the season. So there's a good amount of time to get some upgrades on the car before we've even driven it, really. As you can see, we actually have a bit of a season break here, which is a bit interesting. Uh, but we do also get that weight reduction upgrade in as well. So a good a batch of upgrades coming in before the first round of the season here. And we have another big bunch of re uh, resource points as well, which I'm going to use for a front downforce. We're going we're gonna to risk it and try and rush it to get it in before the Australian Grand Prix. We'll see how that works. And unfortunately, we just don't quite have enough resource points to uh, get another weight reduction upgrade. But skipping through there, you can see we do get the rear downforce upgrade coming through. And uh, with a whole no another batch of resource points, we do have now just enough resource points to potentially go for another upgrade. We don't have enough points to go for a rear downforce, but we do go for another weight reduction. Either way, it won't come in for the Australian Grand Prix, as that's only in a couple days' time. Uh, but we should get that in, hopefully, before the Italian Grand Prix in Imola. Uh, we did also, uh, unfortunately, not get that second front downforce upgrade, but looking at the performance chart heading into the first round of the season, it is actually very close. We are uh, in, on paper, smack bang in the middle of the field, but it is very, very close from Alpine all the way down to Williams and then Alpha Terrier, just trailing behind a little bit, uh, and then Red Bull are way out front, and then Ferrari, Mercedes, and Aston Martin uh, make up sort of uh, second, third, and fourth there on their own. So yeah, it's sort of three separate categories, Red Bull all the way out on their own, then Ferrari, Mercedes, and Aston in sort of the middle and then uh, from Alpine down is sort of the rest of the field. So a little bit of a spread this uh, at the start of this season, uh, but uh, I imagine that can close up very, very quickly and we should have some very exciting races still with pretty much half the grid all very, very, very close on performance. Um, but heading into Australia, there is not meant to be any rain, as you can see here, very dry looking track heading into the race weekend. Uh, I'm going to be continuing the trend of not including qualifying. I just don't find it that interesting of a thing to include in the videos. If you do want to see qualifying, make sure to let me know in the comments. And uh, if I see enough support for it, then yeah, absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll think about including it. But for now, we'll head to the grid rundown for the Australian Grand Prix. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Russell, Sainz, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Gasly, Stroll, Norris, Magnussen, Oscar Piastri, Benjamin, Joe, Hulkenberg, Albon, Sonoda, Sargent, and Nick de Vries. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. We're still in with a chance of winning this title. We need you to push as hard as you can in the five remaining races. So here we are lining up in P14 on the grid. I don't know what Mark was just talking about there with being in contention for the championship in the last five rounds or whatever. There's 10 rounds to go, and when I very highly doubt we'll be in contention for the championship. But either way... We are here in P14 on the grid for the Australian Grand Prix, our home Grand Prix here for our debut race in Formula 1 for Alfa Romeo. Not a bad qualifying. We qualified just ahead of our teammate, Joe Guan Yu there. You can see him there in P15. Our fellow Aussie Oscar Piastri also just one spot ahead of us in P13. So I guess that can sort of be our challenge for this round is to sort of beat our, our fellow Aussie. And, uh, yeah, come out on top in the Australian battle at the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, but either way, really, our, our, our main focus is just to have a clean race, get to the end, and uh, try and make sure we have as good a race as possible, get as many resource points as possible to continue upgrading this Alfa Romeo car and looking further into the rest of the season. Uh, but regardless, uh, we just want to have a, a nice race to start off our career here in F123. And we start that off by getting a perfect stop here on the grid, 0.1 metres away from as far forward as we were able to go. And there you are. So a good start so far to the Australian Grand Prix. We can now go to five red lights and we are actually away for the race. It is a good launch here for our first start in Formula 1. It was a little bit average on the actual very start get-go. But in the later stages, we've absolutely dominated. We're up alongside Oscar Piastri, heading into Turn 1. A little bit of contact with our fellow Aussie. We go around the outside of Turn 2, but we continue going alongside the McLaren now on the run down to Turn 3, not really able to get fully ahead. I'm still not completely confident on the brakes yet in this car and on this new game with the new handling and physics, but we do get ahead 
of Oscar in turn three and four there and get ourselves up one spot from where we started in the P13 here on the first slab. Joe Guanyu, our teammate, has unfortunately lost a spot to Alex Albon, who's actually started on the soft compound tires. That's something that I have noticed and we will have a little look at in a minute. Uh, there is a big split of starting on the mediums and starting on the softs here in this race. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out later on in the Grand Prix with pit strategies and if maybe some cars have to do two stops we'll have to see though we're looking up ahead Lando Norris here on lap number two now under attack from Lance Stroll so the McLaren on the mediums the Aston on the softs uh, playing again into this whole strategy difference that we've got going on here in the first round the Aston Martin gets the move done pretty easily there the Aston is a quicker car than the McLaren and on the softer compound tyres and so for Stroll to have even been behind really to begin with is uh, a bit nuts for Norris to have been that high up but he does in the end get back ahead of Lando and uh, at the moment that is the train that we are on the back of that is the battle for the last couple spots in the points paying positions uh, that is Stroll and Norris in P9 and P10 and then we are on the very back of that train in P13 at the moment uh, looking up on a rundown though uh, of the order Verstappen leads away so he actually got the jump on pole sitter Charles Leclerc there Verstappen on the softs Leclerc on the mediums the other Red Bull of Perez also on the softs same two with Russell then for the other Ferrari of Carlos Sainz is also on the medium combat tyres uh, Hamilton on the softs and then Alonso on the medium so a big difference in the top teams on the different tyre strategies and uh, Ocon in 8th on the medium, Stroll in ninth on the soft. So even within teams there, the two Aston Martins on differing strategies with Alonso's on the medium and Stroll on the softs. Then you've got Norris rounding out the points in 10th. Then it's Gasly, Magnussen, and then myself in P13. So not a bad start to the race so far. We're not too far away from points, but I am just fighting to sort of stay with the back of these guys at the moment. And he's very, very cutting edge on pace. I'm giving it absolutely everything to try and stick with these top 10 guys at the moment. And then Joe, still down in P16 within the same battle pack as last night. It is a massive battle pack from pretty much P9 all the way down to Sonoda in P20. So very, very close at the moment now on that number four. Norris actually coming back at Lance Stroll. So the soft tires already worn out a bit maybe as uh, the mediums may be starting to come into their own. McLaren sent it around the outside there and actually gets the move done on Lance Stroll. Stroll so a very good move from Lando Norris there to get himself back up in a P9. Stroll now immediately under attack from Pierre Gasly already. So maybe it is a case of the softs running out. But you can see here on lap number five now, I'm completely dumping the battery to try and get up alongside the house. I'm si sick of sitting behind him. And we actually do get the move done into the very quick chicane there. And uh, yeah, so very lucky to actually get that done considering we just deployed a whole bunch of battery to try and do it. Meanwhile, up ahead, Pierre Gasly is now going for a move on Lance Stroll. Very similar to the move Norris just made on him around the outside there. Uh, and Stroll puts up a bit more of a fight against the Alpine, but in the end there, Gasly does get the move done into that last points paying position. Uh, and so that is both Alpines now into the points. Stroll falling further and further down. Piastri also managed to get the move done on Magnussen. If you uh, had not seen in the background there, he did get that done. Uh, this was at the same time as those little battles happening there uh, at the front of the field. Verstappen overtaken by Charles Leclerc. So this is even more confirmation of that uh, tyre switchover. Uh, remember Leclerc on the mediums, Verstappen on the softs, and Leclerc does retake the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. So absolutely, it looks like the softs were only good for the first four or so laps of the race and now it's uh, medium territory and so I don't even know if it really would have been worth going up to the soft compound tyres for those four laps of a little bit of extra speed but now looking forward on lap 7 P. Gasly under attack from Lance Stroll Gasly makes a mistake so Stroll does get through I very nearly hit him there and almost lost the car trying to avoid him so that's us up at a P11 and because Stroll had a bad run we now have an opportunity to get into the top 10 and into the points paying positions we go around the outside of the Aston Martin into turn 3 we're going to have the inside for turn 4 and we do get the move done up in a P10. There's more battles further down. Piastri did get ahead of Pierre Gasly. And so Gasly losing three spots there from that one mistake. He'll be absolutely kicking himself. Piastri doing very good to take the advantage of it at the moment. He's sort of following us through this pack. But at the moment now, we now find ourselves sort of under pressure from that whole field behind us. Meanwhile, further up ahead, Norris has closed in and is now overtaking Esteban Ocon for P8. So Norris has found a whole bunch of pace suddenly on uh, as the, we sort of get a bit later on into this stint on the medium combat tyres. He does get himself up in a P8. He's under attack straight straight away from Esteban Ocon. However, Norris did actually have the DRS there on the Alpine. I guess he was just behind in the DRS detection zone. So he does get ahead. Meanwhile, we're now back under attack from the Aston Martin once again. There's more uh, uh, scuffles happening further back in this battle pack as well. Look how many cars are in this battle. This is a great race so far for the first race on this new game. Gasly does get the move back done on Piastri. We have been able to hold on to the move 
uh, ahead of Lance Stroll there in P10. So for now, we hold on to this last points paying position. Now on to lap number eight, Joe Guan Yu, our teammate, looking to make a move on our fellow Aussie Piastri on lap number eight. I think I already said lap number eight, but either way, we have a good show around the outside of the McLaren, and he does get the move done there, so up into P13. So uh, Joe's actually made up a couple spots from where he started now. Good to see that it's not just us that has this pace, but uh, more so our car is doing uh, very well at this stage of the Grand Prix as well. And uh, we could potentially be on for a double points paying position if Joe can get himself a little bit further up the field. Meanwhile, we're still trying to defend from Lance Stroll. Looking up ahead though on lap number nine, it's a spin for Lewis Hamilton from P6. And so this is an opportunity for us to get even more points here. However, we are under attack from Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin. He's going to go to the inside with DRS. However, there's a yellow flag and that does save us. And there's actually a safety car. And so for a second, we can take a breather there. We're into P9 for now. So we're looking to score a couple points in our do debut race and at our home race. I was very interested to see what the pit strategy would be for everyone, though, with the differing tyre compounds. And it looks like everyone is going to come in. The soft tyres were probably pushing those uh, th the pit stop time anyway. The mediums, I know, we were going to come in in just a couple laps time as it was. And so it's a pretty perfect time. But what this does mean is all 20 cars you would expect to come into the pit lane. And so it's going to be an absolutely chock full pit lane. You can see the front team's already double stacking. And it's an engine failure. Look at this. We've got smoke coming out of the back of our engine on the MFD. And he's highlighted red. That is unbelievable. We were looking to score a couple points in our first race at our home Grand Prix and in, in this career mode. And our engine has failed. We're going to get uh, onto the hard tire compound anyway. And we have to wait for the whole train of cars to come through. This is horrible for our teammate as well. You can see him stacking in behind us. We've been released back out onto the track. I'm guessing just to let us uh, get out of the way of Joe Kuan Yu. Even though our engine is absolutely billowing with smoke at the moment. We are absolutely spraying Albon. Sorry about that, mate. Uh, but yeah, uh, we don't really have a choice. We have to get out of our teammates' way. And uh, you can see we do get control taken off of us there. Benjamin Sversky retiring due to a mechanical failure in our first race, only 10 laps in to our first race of our career. Absolutely devastating there. And we were looking to score some good points as well. But that is it. We're going to pull over to the grass section here. And hopefully this is not a bad omen for how this career mode is going to play out on this year's iteration of the F1 game. You can see there it is confirmation mechanical failure. We are out of the session. And yeah, that's it. We are out of our first race in Formula One. Another superb Australian Grand Prix comes to an end there. And it's a thoroughly deserved victory. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, they managed their tyres to absolute perfection. A tyre whisperer, in fact. And that is what set them apart. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. So here we are with the results for the Australian Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc did end up taking the win and the fastest lap to take maximum points away from the first round of the season here in Australia. Verstappen finished in P2. Russell with a good result for Mercedes up in P3. Perez fourth. Alonso doing well for Aston in P5. Signs in P6. Norris seventh. Hamilton recovered to P8. Then the two Alpines are out at the points in ninth and tenth. And then our teammate Joe ended up in P13. So not a bad first race really for him. We obviously... Could have had a much better race than what we did. We obviously DNF from our home Grand Prix. We could have very potentially fought for points. Remember, we were ahead of Hamilton after the pit stops. And so 
he finished in P8, we could have very well been up there. I imagine he would have come past us himself. However, we could have very well gone for a P9 or P10. And yeah, it's just super unfortunate that in our very first race that we have an engine failure and at our home Grand Prix as well, just to top it all off in terms of the driver standings. Obviously, it's just where everyone finished being the first round of the season as you do. And so, yeah, we are smack dead last in the driver standings. Joe in 13th, Leclerc leads the way in terms of the constructors. It's Ferrari by four points over Red Bull, then Mercedes in third, Aston fourth, McLaren fifth, Alpine sixth, Alfa Terry seventh. And uh, Alfa Terry is sort of the start of everyone with no points. It's ourselves in eighth, then Haas and Williams in ninth and 10th so still a long way to go nine rounds in this season left uh, to complete and hopefully we can have a bit of redemption for the horrible start to this season and to this career mode that we have had however we do now have to have a little bit of an investigation we do get 400 extra resource points to put into car development uh, thanks to that retirement and the team sort of saying sorry and so we'll have a look at what actually failed on us it was the MGUK that has decided to go bang on us there unfortunately um and yeah, that, uh, unfortunately that just means we are one unit down already after just one round of the season. Hopefully it doesn't come to bite us later on in the season. We still do know how to have another three, but yeah, super unfortunate. Uh, but if you guys have enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this in the future, do make sure to leave a like and subscribe. See more content like this and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.